Well, hi, welcome back to A Boat Called Wanda, special lockdown edition. It's been a massive amount of time since I've uh, put out a video, so if you're still here and you're still watching, well, thanks for being persistent and standing by. I am persistent and I want to finish Wanda. I will finish Wanda, but uh, a lot of things have come up which have stopped me from spending much time at all on Wanda in the last six months. One of the biggest challenges I've got now is that I've actually moved a long way away from Wanda, so it takes a long time to get down here. Now, I have actually come down here probably once or twice in the last six months. Um, I was trying to finish off the Seacocks, but I didn't get a chance to put a video update out because a couple of reasons. Number one, um, I didn't get to finish anything, so it's just a little bit bitty. Secondly, the approach I was using to put the Seacocks on is just not working, so I've decided to throw away that tutorial that I suggested a couple of months ago and start again, find my own way of doing it. Um, okay, so before we get started, let me just take you back and take a look at this, which is um, what sort of happened over the last six months. Hi, and welcome back to a boat called Wanda. Well, I've got another day where I've been able to escape and have a quick trip down to the boat yard. Probably only got about five or six hours here though. Um, so yeah, it's really cold. It's about five degrees. I need to get a little bit more clothing on. The first thing I want to do is have a look at um, the progress that Anthony's made. Well, that's looking really good. There's um, some laminate on here. So this was laid down with uh, epoxy. There's a, uh, a layer here of carbon fiber. I think that's the black stuff here is uh, carbon fiber, uh, which make it really solid. Yeah, so good progress there. It's looking good. And the laminates come all the way to the back here, which is good because there was a big sort of sharp piece of filler here so that's all laminated again which is great. Now one thing that I uh, I'm keen to find out is that this hasn't uh, sort of been stuck in with that epoxy and all the release stuff that I put in there is going to make sure that this comes out. So let's see. Uh, it's a little bit tight. Uh, bugger. It has stuck in. I didn't put enough release agent on it. Well, unfortunately, my first uh, attempt at putting a seacock in following that um, tutorial that I, I showed you last time hasn't gone so well. And in fact, what I've managed to do is um, it fix my through hole into that backing seacock flange because somehow when I bedded down that backing plate, some thickened epoxy has found its way into the connection between the through hole and the seacock and despite all that um, wax sealant that I sprayed in there it wasn't quite enough because uh, there must be some resin that's caught it and I've had a hell of a time trying to undo it and all I've managed to do so far is actually break my step wrench. Okay so I'm going to try something different here um, I've got a piece of PVC pipe that's about the same uh, with us those skin fittings and uh, I'm going to push, well the first thing I'm going to do is put a lot of this uh, release wax on it. Right now I'll push this through here. Actually this probably needs to put more release agent on. Oh that's okay. Okay so that looks pretty square on. Right, so this way, hopefully, this will just guide over there and that'll sort of give it the angle it needs. Oh dear. And then, uh, this is waxed up nicely. If it does, if the resin does stick and bomb the plastic tube to this backing plate, then you know I can just hack up the, blast, the plastic tube, knock it out, cut it up, whatever. Um, so we'll see how this goes. But obviously, I just need something to guide it down, so I've got a perfectly perpendicular angle. And I think this is going to work actually.
I reckon that'll do it. Well, it's been quite a while in between drinks with Old Wonder. Now I'm back after about five or six weeks away. We actually went to Australia for five weeks and took our two-month-old daughter on a long-haul flight. So after doing that, I feel like boat repair is pretty easy now. Um, yeah, so it's good to be back and uh, I'm keen to have a look at what's happened because uh, Anthony's been doing some work here and uh, I'll pick up where I left off from about six weeks ago. Right, well that's the rudder shaft which has been cleaned up a little bit and reinserted and I think up the top um, the hole has been drilled through the deck because this actually protrudes up about eight inches above the deck. Um, so that's good and it looks like there's obviously a lot more work to be done here but I believe Anthony's bought some or saw some keys because we needed a new key here um, and also a spacer so that's good. Looking forward to seeing a bit more work on this. Oh yeah, there we go. That's great, that's not stuck at all. Right, let's go through from the inside and see if this comes all the way out. Okay, so this is what it looks like from the inside. I can take this out. There we go. Yeah, so you can see there's a bit of a sandwich layer there and the thickened epoxy which is bedded down the backing plate has come all the way through so that's nice. Right the next thing I can do here is to just do a test to um, put this in and see that the through hole comes through from the other side nice and perpendicular. Well, I'm not having a lot of luck here unfortunately with these through hole fittings. What I found with this one is I tried to align the uh, through hole and I couldn't marry it up to the thread inside with the backing flange. The studs were kind of not quite aligned so that meant the backing plate and the flange were slightly off center so you know that this wouldn't line up so what I've had to do is undo those studs and just reposition it. Um, so I think there could be a slight problem with the first template I made up whereby the uh, three studs don't make sure that uh, the, the backing plate is perfectly aligned with the hole. So anyway, and as I broke my um, step wrench last time, I've just used this mixing stick, which is the right diameter to catch the lugs. Obviously, I can't apply a lot of pressure. Anyway, so I've aligned this up, and I think what I need to go do next is go in and redrill those holes for the studs so yeah and then this is really embarrassing <laughs> I've got to cut out this perfectly good uh, through hole because this is the one that's actually really locked on tight to the backing plate because I got a bit of that resin leaking somewhere and um, it's made a absolutely solid connection so I actually need to cut this out it's a waste of a brand new throw through hole and uh, I'm a bit disappointed with myself so anyway, there's two ways and neither of them seem to be good. This way you basically put everything together. You guarantee that it's aligned perfectly over the hole, but there's a risk that if any of the um, uh, thickened epoxy gets through and makes contact, then it's stuck on. This way I'm using the tube to align the backing plate, but then again, if the um, flange isn't perfectly aligned to that hole, then this isn't going to marry up. So. Yeah, I think the biggest problem with this technique is there's just no room for error. The tolerances are so fine, everything has to be perfect, and it's really hard to achieve that. So I'm going to sort of experiment with some different ways to see if I can find an improved way of doing it. So for now, I'm just going to cut this one out. Okay, so now I'm here today to finish off the seacocks. I've got a new way of doing that. Then I want to get into the build and start to prepare that for relaminating. And I also want to check out uh, that water leak. When I pulled the tabbing back from the inside of the bilge, there was all this water running down. 
that might have come from the water tank. So I want to do some sort of pressure test on the water tank to see if I can find out if there's a leak there and if, if that's where the water came from because I want to um, deal with the source of that leak before I relaminate up the bilge. Okay, well, let's get started. Okay, we're back in the bilge. It's been a while. And one thing I want to do next, actually just let me do a really quick test. Well, you can't hear any beeping when I uh, test this down the bottom of the bilge and that's because now I don't know if you can see that but uh, it's showing about 30% so it's just beautiful it's bang on the green and pretty much everywhere I put this now it's incredibly low so finally I've got a nice dry bilge which means I can now start relaminating this and uh, repairing it Okay, so before I get down here and start fiberglassing this back up together, there's one thing I want to check. You, you might remember that um, I found some water coming through these seams here, either side. You can see that one there. You know, I had some tapping here. I pulled the tapping back and there was uh, a lot of water dribbling down here. So um, I just want to make sure that that water wasn't coming from the water tank. And that's the water tank there. So basically, I want to do a little bit of a pressure test now on that tank. Um, I'm going to get my vacuum um, with the uh, vacuum pump, hook it up, close off all the uh, hatches and um, water, water pipe uh, inlets, um, try and seal it up, run the vacuum, try and pull the vacuum, and then see if there's any air escaping into that tank, particularly around the front here. If there is, then I need to get to the tank and fix the water tank. Um, you know, which is not great, but let's see what happens with me. I just set up the vacuum pump and there was just no way I could pull any sort of seal whatsoever. Um, so yeah, that's not going to show me whether there's a leak or not. And what I just did then is I just got my um, camera phone and put it under and took these shots here. And as you can see, I'm pretty sure that um, at least this inside seam is not really laminated up it might have had some silicon or something at some point yeah so basically i think uh you know there's there's an opportunity for air to get from the water tank up into the corner of that seam and then i guess all the way through the tabbing and perhaps that's where that leak came from so short of cutting out the top of this <laughs> i'm done with cutting pits of wonder out um I'm not sure what to do. If anybody else has got a HR352 and have seen this problem before um, or seen water leaking from the water tank, let me know. Pretty keen to know what I can do about it. Anyway, I don't think there's anything I can do more today. I'm going to come back with my little uh, telescopic um, spy camera and try and get it under there to see what's going on. But yeah, I'm going to give up on this vacuum pressure test. It's just, you know, it showed me already that there's no, nowhere near a vacuum. So I'm just up here working on the heads and um, this is a 1.5 inch diameter. Um, whatever was here before is actually uh, quite small. It's a bit of an odd size. So I want to drill this out um, to enlarge it, use one and a half inch the whole way through. So this is the backing plate I made. I'm just going to use this and glue that in here. Just a bit of hot glue here to tack it on. line it up. I'll try and offset it a little bit so it's further aft. Okay, that's my guide. Oops. Terrific. I just want to take the gloss off this. This is a piece of fiberglass that uh, makes up the shower stall, so it's all sort of one piece. Yeah, that will be good.
Right, so hopefully what I have here is some through holes that have got um, a good amount of release wax in them so that they won't stick to anything. Step two is to get out the hot glue gun, which is fast becoming my best friend. Uh, what's going to be the best way to do this? Maybe just uh, do a bit up here. And the idea here is that I'm going to use the skin fitting to find that perpendicular angle and use this as a guide to bed down the backing plate. So let's see. No, that's not going to work because there's wax here. Well, the wax works, that's good. Unfortunately that's it for my update for this time. As always, um, I didn't get enough time to do everything that I planned to. I had less than 24 hours, it wasn't a massive amount of time, but you know, at least I've got all my backing plates bedded down now, so every seacock's got a backing plate so bedded down. Um, when I come back next time I can put the skin fitting through, connect it to the backing, to the, to the flange. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I've decided to drill straight through the hull and have some uh, screws coming through the hole to um, attach the, the um, seacock to. So I've given up on that idea of using the studs and, and threading the hole. And um, I just found that um, there's just no tolerance. If the studs aren't perfectly lined up, then you've got to bend them to get onto the um, seacock. And then, you know, you've, you've sort of lost the integrity once things have started to bend a little bit. So yeah, this is the way I'm going to do it. And I'm happy, I like the way this works. Um, the other thing I'll do when I come back in probably four weeks is I've, I've lined up Rob to help me with the kill. So just going to um, blitz the kill, put um, some laminate around the bottom, ferret, um, and then I'll get to the inside of the kill. I found one last patch which was still a little bit uh, moist. It wasn't like in the red, but um, I've taken a little bit more uh, material off and I've got a another heat lamp in there so when I come back in four weeks time that should be ready to go so um, yeah thanks for watching um, there's not going to be that many updates unfortunately for this year but uh, if you if you subscribe then you'll get an alert and I should put a, put out an update you know every month or two from now on hopefully so yeah take care everyone and I'll see you next time